What's up my dudes and welcome back to Pilby Green. Today I'm going to be turning this Ficus Elastica which is a variant of this Ficus Elastica with, this, with the dark leaf. Um, this is a lime green Ficus Elastica and I really really like it. So this is a regular dark leaf one and I bonsai this probably about 18 months ago into a clump style. It's going pretty well. Um, these aren't your typical bonsai plants because of the large leaves, but they're fun. They're really fun, and I really like the way they grow. So I've decided today to turn this lime green that I got from Ikea for a very, very good price, and this beautiful little kind of rustic pot into its first steps as a bonsai. I'm going to get rid of the soil first and replace it with bonsai soil. I'm raking out the roots in a radial fashion away from the trunks. It turns out this is two trees, not just one. So after washing off both of them with a hose, they've got a pretty interesting root base. These, these are actually two separate plants or were originally two separate plants, but it looks like they've fused together over time, which is really cool because it just shows that if two different plants of the same species like this uh, pushed up against each other and tied together or even nestling together, they will eventually fuse together into one plant, which is kind of what I'm trying to do with my other Ficus elastica with the uh, clump style, um, getting multiple uh, trunks to fuse together. Um, these have a weird root base. They kind of remind me of mandrakes from Harry Potter, you know, when they, you pull them out, that the students pull them out, and, like, and then they, 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 they're like babies that scream, they're like, Aah! um, and they, and then you die, or maybe you get paralyzed, I can't remember, but, um, yeah, so, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is, I'm going to find a root plane, um, I still think I'm going to try and incorporate both together, because um, I do want this to be another clump style. Um, I'm going to take a few of these bottom leaves off because they're kind of just impeding on the design. And then we'll get planting. But the first thing we need to do is take off some of these really bulbous roots on both of them. So to do that, I will use my trusty handy dandy green clippers. And I think I would like the root base to be pretty high. I like, I don't want this sitting what right out of the soil from here. Um, I want it to kind of be growing out around this level here. So I can take off a good amount of this bulbous root. So I just cut parallel to, uh, the soil like that. Terrible cut. And again, with the other one at the same spot, and I don't want to take too much more off um, this tree because if I do, it may not survive. For the second one, uh, I, I can kind of compare it to the first. I think it's going to be wrapping around the back here so you can see all three trunks clearly. So if I do that, maybe that will be the front, yeah. Either way, I can kind of level it up with the initial cuts that I did here and come across without cu cutting any of the finer roots. Get rid of that guy. Now that I've got my level parallel to the soil. Perfect. Time for planting. I have my little fly screen that's going to block the drainage hole at the bottom uh, of this kind of eclectic um, rustic pot, which I really, really like. I think the light gray goes really well with the lime leaves. Um, and the first step, of course, when planting is to add, uh, add a base layer of bonsai soil. Now, I'm gonna mound this up pretty high because I know that these are going to sit quite high in the pot towards the upper half of the pot. And I want to give them plenty of soil for the roots to grow into and flourish over the summer. So I've mounted it up quite high. And what I have to do is 
I want the thicker, I have to pair them together. So I want the thicker trunk of the two, even though this is a dual trunk, this one actually looks quite thick. So I want the thicker trunk to be towards the front of the viewer, um, just to give it a bit more perspective to the comp style. So I'm actually gonna plant them in the same formation as they want, they were before, just because the, tr the trunks are hugging really nicely. And over time, all three of the trunks will fuse together. But from the front, I also want to be able to see all three trunks. So I'm going to turn it that way. So you're seeing the front now. I'm going to spread these roots out so they're radial as, or as radial as they can be. And push down slightly like that. And I can even use an electrical tie here just to hold the planting together. So I've just popped on a couple of zip ties, one down below the surface root base, right down here, just pinching the root, the root bases together down there, and then one up high, which will be above the soil, above the root plane. The electrical ties will create um, a bulge if you don't clip them within, you know, three to six months. It's not too tight, but it's tight enough. So within three months of growth, especially coming into summer, um, that that clip tie will need to, that electric tie will need to be clipped off. It's already standing by itself just after one scoop, but I will hold on to it as I add more. My bonsai soil isn't actually bonsai soil. It's succulent and cacti mix. Um, it's a lot cheaper than bonsai soil, and it's essentially the same thing, so that's why I use it. Um, it's really porous, it's got um, small stones in it, sand, and it drains really, really well, which is what you want um, in a bonsai soil. Uh, so that's what I use for pretty much all of my bonsai these days. It's just much more cost effective. Really good so far. That is the front, what you can see. What I am gonna do though, just before um, putting some moss down, maybe a couple of rocks and giving it a deep water, I might take off some of these interior leaves. So, that guy there. That one there. And these ficus uh, elastica do bleed this white sap, which is toxic. Do not touch white sap, plants, plants will kill you. No, nah, I don't know. It doesn't kill you, but um, it. Uh, some people have um, allergies to it, so I try to uh, keep away from it as much as I can. This leaf here is kind of blocking the trunk lines. Let me take it off. With bonsai, especially starting off like this, you really, from the front, you really want to be able to see the trunk lines. It gives it much more dimension and scope. Um, this leaf down here is a bit low and it's got a little bit of damage to it. I'm going to take it off. But you also want the bonsai to have uh, depth to it. So from the sides, you want it to have diff lots of kind of layers. So it's not just on one plane. So that's actually looking pretty good. This leaf here is intruding on this leaf and it's growing towards the center of the tree. Take it off. And then this leaf here is kind of doing the same thing. It's competing on these other leaves and competing for sunlight and it's growing in towards the center of the tree, which you don't want. So take that guy off too. This one here I'm gonna do take off for the same reasons.
And I think for now, that'll do for the pruning. Now let's do a little bit of landscaping, some rocks and moss. So last step, I'm gonna put in some small rocks. I'm gonna put in a odd number of rocks, three, because odd numbers look better. With rocks and bonsai, they hold multiple purposes. You can scape with them, make them make the trees look more miniature, but also they very conveniently, especially with freshly planted trees, help to hold the tree in place so it doesn't tip over in wind or fall down if it's top heavy. So that's my rock placement, as simple as that. Then I have these three mounds of terrestrial moss that I've gathered recently. They're looking very fresh. I'm gonna put the largest mound over this side. Push it down quite a lot. Don't worry, you won't hurt the moss. Push it down into the substrate so it has great, great contact. So that way, you know it's still taking up moisture. The medium piece of moss back here and the smallest piece Last but not least, I'm going to use some old bonsai wire and using one long piece, I'm going to put the two branches against each other and bend them into an interesting curvy shape. Don't put too much pressure on the stems as they may snap. Here's the final shot of the tree giving it a full 360 degree turnaround. Oh, a little spider guy right here, look at this dude. I'm pretty happy with the final product of this lime green ficus elastica. I think it looks really cool and I will be looking forward to how it progresses in the future. Thanks for watching, see you next time on PLB Green.